verse. But I'm going to start reading in Genesis 13, uh, chapter 1, and I'm going to try to be uh, real brief. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot with him in the south. And Abraham was very rich with cattle and silver and gold. And he went on his journey from the south even to Bethel unto a place where his tent has been in the beginning between Bethel and Hai, and to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And the Abraham called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also which went with Abraham had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together for their substance was great so that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanites and the Perizzites dwelt in that land. And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, for we be brethren. It is not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the, the left hand, then I will go to the right. If thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plains, plain of Jordan that was well watered. Everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zor. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves, the one from the other. Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of plain, of plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the man of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And today I want to, I've simply titled this sermon, Where Are You Going to Pitch This Tent? Where are you going to pitch your tent today? And, and uh, I'm going to start off with a story, and this is a lady, she was getting ready to uh, go on a, a camping trip. And this is what she sent to the camp that she was going. You know, sometimes it's good if we're going to pitch your tent somewhere. We've got some questions to ask, don't we? So I'll tell you what, I'm going to start this off, and I'm, I'm going to try to be brief, y'all. Just hang on. But y'all enjoy this story. Y'all kids listening, y'all listen to this story, okay? This is a this is lady wanted some information about where to put her t uh, campsite. The story is told of a lady who was rather old-fashioned, always quiet, delicate, and elegant, especially in her language. She and her husband were planning a vacation to Florida, so she rode a particular campground asking for reservations. She wanted to make sure the campground was fully equipped, but didn't quite know how to ask about the toilet facilities. She just couldn't bring herself to write down the word toilet in her letter. After much deliberation, she finally came up with the old-fashioned term bathroom commode. But when she wrote that down, she still thought she was being too forward. So she, start, she started all over again and rewrote the entire letter referring to the bathroom commode merely as the BC. Does the campground have its own BC? Is what she actually wrote. Well, the campground owner wasn't old fashioned at all. When he got the letter, he couldn't figure out what the lady was talking about. That BC business really stumped him. After worrying about it for a while, he showed the letter to several campers, but they couldn't imagine what the lady meant either. So the campground owner finally came to the conclusion that the lady must be asking about the local Baptist church, <laughs> sat down and wrote the following reply. Now this is the reply to the letter. I, re I regret very much delaying answering your letter, but I take pleasure in informing you that a BC is located nine miles away north of the campground. <laughs> It is capable of sitting 250 people at one time. I admit it's quite a distance away. If you're in a habit of going regularly, but not, uh, no doubt you will be pleased to know that a great number of people take their lunches along and make a full day of it. They usually arrive early and stay late. It is such a beautiful facility and the acoustics are marvelous. Even the normal delivery sounds can be heard. The last time my wife and I went was six years ago, and it was crowded. We had to stand up the whole time we were there. It might interest you to know that right now a supper is planned to raise money to buy more seats. They are going to hold it in the basement of the BC. I would like to say it plans me very much uh, not to be able to go more regularly, but it surely is no lack of desire on my part. 
As we grow, it seems to be more of an effort, particularly in cold weather. If you do decide to come down to our campground, perhaps I could go with you the first time you go, sit with you, and introduce you to all the older folks. Remember, this is a friendly community. Sincerely, the campground community leader. But sometimes it is, uh, you know, when, we, when we're trying to decide which way we're going to go, uh, you know, it's helpful sometimes to find out some information. But back to a more serious note here, if I can get all y'all's attention. Uh, this story, though, is taught about Lot and Abraham. And uh, they were, uh, I believe that Lot was the nephew of Abraham. And what they were doing is they had gained up this, they were herdsmen. And they had this great cattle. And what they would do is they, would, they lived in tents. And they would go and they, all their animals would graze. And when all the grass was gone, then they would pick up their tents and they would move somewhere else and relocate. But they started getting in arguments. The herdsmen were getting in arguments, so they moved to separate places. And, uh, you know, uh, Abraham told Lot, said, look, if you'll pick the east, I'll go west. Whatever you do, I'm going to go away from you. Well, Abraham, uh, or Lot, said, you know, I'm going to go uh, over here, this direction. And uh, it was over near the uh, Sodom. Now, y'all know Sodom from the Bible. It was a, it was a bad place, and, and it ended up God destroyed the place. But then Abraham, on the other hand, he pitched his hand towards Bethel, and he was a worship. He worshiped there. But ultimately what happened is because Abraham, y'all know what the Bible says, Father Abraham, because of his, his life, because of his choosing after God or following after God, he was a mighty warrior. As many as he's referred to as the stars, he's going to have the children of the, the stars of the sky and the sands of the seas is how he's referred to. But Lot, on the other hand, he chose to be next to the community of Sodom. And Sodom was a wicked place. And what ended up happening is by the 14th verse, or the 14th chapter, if you read it, where he was actually living, he was living in Sodom. That even, even though he was outside of it and looking at it, it ended up drawing him in. And he ended up drawn in, and because of that, he lost a wife when he left. If you remember in the Bible, she turned around, and she turned into a pillar of salt. But after that also, he ended up laying with his two daughters, and he had children by them. And what a mess. They got him drunk, and, and what a mess. But, but to say all that, we've got a choice in life to make. And our choice is, which way are we going to put our tent? Are we going to put it far out in the world, and that's what we often do. We often look at, you know, I've, I've got finances, I've got to supply my own needs, I've got to, you know, I've got to look out for me. Instead of letting God look out for me, I try to look out for me. But that's what we've got to learn. We've got to learn to let God look out for us. And then sometimes, you know, maybe you're new, and maybe you pitch your tent right at the door, and you know, you say, hey, I want to just look. I want to look around here and see what's going on, and see if I want to pitch my tent. This is the place. Brother Gary just said it this morning. This is the place to pitch your tent. Mm -hmm. This is the place. This is the safe and secure place that can pitch your tent. And I, I, I've, I know I've gone quick this morning. Uh, and I, I've, I was thinking about these children. Y'all doing good up here this morning, aren't you? I, uh, I thought about them. Uh, you know what? Sometimes as children... You know, y'all don't have the choice that I have to pitch your tent somewhere, do I? Sometimes, I, you know, I have to rely on other people. But, you know, in God's Word, in Matthew 18 and 6, but whoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hung, hanged around his neck, and he was drowned in the depths of the sea. And in the verse 14, even so... It is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. So you know what? No matter where y'all are, y'all hear me? No matter where y'all are, God is watching out for you. And you can always pray to Him. He'll always hear you. Any little voice you say, if you'll just say, Jesus, He's there. And He hears y'all. So matter, no matter where you're at in life, wherever the, the tent has been pitched, in your life, wherever it's been put, God's looking out for you. 
and God will listen to your cries and listen to your calls, and He can always listen to the Word. And come on up here and have a seat. But today, church, for these children and for us, and I'm going to open up with the, these authors you can sing this morning, but uh, I'm going to open it up. Where do you want to pitch your tent? Do we want to pitch it somewhere out there? I can tell you the best place to pitch it. It's right here. Put your faith and your hope and your trust in Jesus Christ, and I'll guarantee you, you won't be sorry. Just a few very, very short time, you'll be looking around and you'll go, oh my goodness, look what's happening. But these children today, you know, they just don't have the choice that we have in where to pitch their tent. Their tent sometimes is, the choice is for them. It's sometimes out of maybe their control, but sometimes it's even out of our control. But they've always got a Jesus they can call. Right. Go ahead and sing today. solve our problems, try to fill our needs of life, or we want to pitch them towards God and He'll never let you down. It'll be a road, if you live with Jesus, it'll be a road that you're happy that you want on. When you look back, you'll be grateful. You'll be grateful. Let Jesus pitch your tent towards Him today, and He will strengthen your life. gave us a story, and I think that we could probably take it today as, I'm just talking to you, Lord, I think we could probably take it for a parable for our lives. Though this maybe wasn't what the attendant was as a parable, but I think we could take it as a parable to where we need to live today. Lord, I, I want each of us, Lord Jesus, to want to draw and to pitch our tent towards you, to pitch our tent towards the place of coming to worship on Sunday, to pitch our tent towards you on Wednesday night Bible study so that we might know what your name is, to know the fullness and the glory of your name. I love you today, Lord Jesus. I ask you to bless each one here, Lord, to provide, to make a way, Lord Jesus, to show each one of us the fullness of your Godhead to this week. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless each one of you today. We okay. love you. Kids, God can you do one more song? Father Abraham, take many sons.
will be good if the adults did that now. <laughs> God bless y'all. Love each one of y'all. And have a blessed week this week in Jesus' Thanks, name.